Hey, it's Mike Cooch with Leverage and Services That Scale.com. In this video, I'm going to share with you the most important lessons in going from zero to a hundred million dollars in recurring revenue sales, selling software and services to small businesses. Let's get into it. Okay, before I get started, I want to be really clear that these are not just lessons from me. I have not built a business from zero to a hundred million dollars in revenue. I did, however, build multiple multi seven figure recurring revenue service businesses selling to small businesses. I built one selling IT services to small businesses. It went on to be one of the fastest growing companies in America three years in a row. And I was able to sell it for millions of dollars. And then the second I built right after, which was a marketing services business selling to small businesses, which actually grew even faster. And during that time, I studied sales and marketing like crazy, specifically sales and marketing to small businesses. And it was really challenging for me because there's not a lot of great resources out there on how to sell specifically to small businesses. Okay, most of those sales training books that are out there, they're great sales training books, but they're more geared towards people who are selling to larger businesses. Selling to small businesses has some pretty darn unique challenges. And if you're a digital agency, you're selling agency services or you're selling uh, services designed around high level that are automated recurring revenue services and you're selling to that small business community, it's got some unique challenges. And that's why I was so excited to find this book, okay? The Sales Acceleration Formula by Mark, I think you said it, his last name, Roberge. Uh, he was the gentleman who led sales and marketing at HubSpot from zero to $100 million, okay? This book was really meaningful to me because HubSpot sells specifically to the small business marketplace. And there are not a lot of companies that have done that successfully. And so I got this book and I absolutely ripped through it because it is such an interesting, challenging topic to me. And I've learned so many lessons from my now 20 years of selling to the small business community, which I've done my entire career. And I've generated probably in the neighborhood of 40 or $45 million in sales between my companies selling to small businesses. But this was the first book that I had found from somebody who had really scaled up those sales and done it pretty darn quickly. And hearing his insights and lessons were incredibly powerful for me because they lined right up with the things that I had I have learned uh, in selling to small businesses. And of course, I got some great new lessons and tips from him uh, because of his experiences that I haven't had in scaling at large. So I am going to give you my Cliff Notes version of my key lessons as well as the key lessons from this book in this quick video. And I think that they will really help you in shaping your sales and marketing strategy in selling to the small business community. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, lesson number one. This is a critical one as you try to grow your sales team. I know many of you probably are just bootstrapping your business and you don't have money to hire salespeople yet, but at some point you probably will so that you can scale up. The number one thing to know about finding good salespeople is that they are not out looking for a job. So if you just post an ad saying we're, we're hiring salespeople, you are not going to get the A players that way. You're gonna get the B players and the C players. And the reason why is that top salespeople never need to look for a new job. They're making great money, they're successful where they're at, and people know it. They have great relationships in their industry. People want them. They know that they're successful and they know that a, a good salesperson is hard to find. And so top salespeople are never just out looking, uh, never out just applying to jobs, or I should say not never, but it's very, very rare, which means that you have to have a strategy for recruiting them. You need to be proactively on the lookout for top talent anywhere that you can find it and then making your pitch as to why they should join your team as their next opportunity. Okay, that's a critical lesson that I learned. I would look for salespeople anywhere. I recruited waiters and waitresses from restaurants. I hired people from other companies. If somebody would cold call me 
and they did a good pitch on the phone, I would offer them a job. Uh, finding good salespeople is really hard. You've got to go out and get them and you've got to be proactive about it. All right, that's lesson number one. Salespeople, good salespeople aren't looking for jobs. You got to go get them. All right, the second lesson I want to share with you related to salespeople that isn't exactly specifically outlined in this book, but this was one of the most critical lessons that I learned about hiring and managing salespeople over the years is that you've got to get rid of dead weight quickly. Okay, salespeople are incredibly expensive and the top salespeople are going to do whatever it takes to hit their numbers. They are absolutely driven by numbers. They're driven by money. They're competitive. Okay. Deadweight salespeople don't have that same drive. And it's very rare that you're going to be able to give somebody that drive. Okay. I used to comment on this all the time with my sales teams. Like, look, you got to supply the motivation. If you're looking for me to motivate you, okay, I've got a compensation structure. That's it, right? <laughs> I've got a compensation structure. You got to supply your own motivation, all right? If that compensation structure doesn't motivate you, then you're probably in the wrong place. Salespeople want to hit their numbers. So if they're not driven, if they're not hungry, if they're not demonstrating that they are eager for success, you've got to get rid of them fast. They will weigh down your finances. They'll weigh down your team's morale because other salespeople will see somebody who's hanging around there who's not performing. They'll bring you bad customers and bad deals because they'll be desperate to get numbers done. So they'll just start bringing you junk customers. They're just a mess all around. The worst thing that you can do is hang on to them for too long. So get rid of those underperforming salespeople fast. Okay, point number three that Mark made in this book here is that effective sales coaching is the most important lever to drive sales productivity. Okay, effective sales coaching is the most important lever to drive sales productivity. Um, I can speak to this personally because we used to do daily quick 15 minute sales coaching huddles with our sales team. So we would just do a real quick role play. Uh, we practice how to ask certain questions, how to handle certain objections. And it was amazing to me over the years of coaching salespeople, how much variability there was amongst your team. Even though you'd give them scripts to follow, even though you'd give them all that coaching, you would have one salesperson that would respond to a question one way and another salesperson that would respond in a totally different way. And the only way that you would get that consistent was just by that constant reinforcement of that sales coaching. And the major point that I want to make on this is that I know so many of my friends in the entrepreneurial community start their businesses and are all of a sudden just forced into the situation where they have to sell to make a living, right? And, and maybe you weren't in that position really before. You had some sort of job where you got a consistent paycheck and, and you weren't really on the hook to drive sales numbers. But when you're an entrepreneur, you're on the hook, okay? It, it's all about you. And particularly if it's just you bootstrapping a company, not raising a bunch of money, you can't afford to hire a sales team you've got to be the number one salesperson. If you have not had any formal sales coaching and sales, sales training, it is absolutely one of the most important things that you can go out and do and invest in for yourself and for your company right away. Okay, I highly recommend Sandler sales training. David Sandler is a legend in the sales training space uh, and he's got franchises all over the country, maybe even all over the world. So you can get a local coach to work with and of course they have a great online curriculum. Sandler selling, I think, is one of the best investments you can possibly make. So someday, hopefully, you're in the position to be coaching the salespeople that are working for you. But it may be that right now, it's more likely that you need the sales coaching. And if you are not 100% confident in your sales skills and you have not had good formal sales training, I highly recommend that you go out and get it right away. Okay, lesson number four that is covered in this book in some really smart and creative ways. Um, and this is a lesson that I repeat to anybody that works with me over and over and over again. And that is that your business has to be built on recurring revenue. If you're selling to small businesses and you're not selling recurring revenue as the foundation of your business, you're in big trouble. Okay, you are not ever going to make enough money 
from one-off projects, the $5,000 project, the $10,000 project, even those twenty dollars and $25,000 projects that you get from small businesses, it's not enough. It's not enough. That one-time revenue versus selling recurring revenue, okay, that one-time revenue will never be enough to build a solid business on. It's got to be recurring revenue. And the point that he stressed in this business that, again, I stress over and over again with my community and my customers is that the number one key to selling recurring revenue is selling only recurring revenue. Okay, and I, I know that that sounds just like, you know, wait a minute, Mike, did you say anything valuable there at all? And yes, I did, trust me. Okay, the point that I'm making is if you give yourself the option and you give yourself, give your customers, excuse me, the option of investing with you in any way other than recurring revenue, guess what? You're going to sell the easy way out and your customers are going to take the easy way out. It's harder to sell recurring revenue. So if you give yourself the option of going to customers and saying, uh, yeah, we can do this project for you and it's X thousands of dollars or getting them to sign up on a recurring revenue service plan, guess what? They are going to choose the easy route, which is just a one-time payment rather than committing to you long-term. And you're going to take the easy route because it's easier and you just get the money in your pocket. But getting that money in your pocket today does not build a foundation of recurring revenue. And the foundation of recurring revenue is how you get freedom, okay? So create service plans that are recurring revenue and that is all you sell. Go out and sell recurring revenue and that's it. Okay, one of the most painful experiences at my business, my first business ever on, was when my my salespeople would come to me and they would have some $30,000 project that somebody wanted to do. And I would tell my salespeople, I'm sorry, you can't sell it. And they would freak out, one, because they're losing commission, and two, because they knew I was broke and I needed the money to continue to pay salaries. But I would tell them no. Why? Because it's not recurring revenue. So all of the time and energy that we take to win that deal and we shift our focus and our team to providing services for that deal instead of going out and signing more recurring revenue is just costing us our business. Only sell recurring revenue. All right, lesson number five related to that recurring revenue. The key to getting your salespeople to sell more recurring revenue, maybe you're gonna guess it here, is to pay them based on selling recurring revenue. Okay, if you shift your commission plan to selling recurring revenue and don't pay commission on one-off deals, then your salespeople are going to sell more recurring revenue. It's amazing to see it happen because if you gave them the option, again, of selling one-time revenue versus recurring revenue and you're paying them commissions on one-time revenue just like you are in recurring, guess what? They're going to be complaining about how it's so hard to sell recurring revenue when you're when you're squawking at them about trying to get those numbers up. The day that you stop paying commission on the one-time revenue and only pay on recurring, they're going to sell more recurring revenue and it's going to work. It's actually pretty incredible. So in this book, he outlines that when they started adjusting their compensation plan based on the recurring life of the customer. So just by changing the compensation plan to get their salespeople more focused on selling the right type of customer that would generate longer term recurring revenue, customer churn dropped by 70% within six months. Okay, just by changing how they were compensating the salespeople, customer churn dropped by 70% within six months, which means that the salespeople are now getting paid to go out and look for better recurring revenue customers. And lo and behold, because their commission was tied to it, they found it. And within six months, it changed the business that much, okay? Only sell recurring revenue, pay your salespeople for recurring revenue, and that's it, and you will build a recurring revenue business. Lesson number six, this was one I had not heard before. It makes a ton of sense to me now, uh, and I wish that I, would knew, uh, that I knew this years ago, and that is, that how far in advance a customer pays for services is directly correlated with high customer success. 
Okay, so uh, the best customers, as you know, right, from selling and working with different customers, are committed customers. Committed customers are the ones that, are, you know, they sign up for your services, they want to get value out of them, they need to get value out of them, they know that you're trying to help them, and so they participate. They work to get value out of your services. That's commitment. The number one sign of customer commitment is them prepaying in advance. So you have got to be pitching an option for your customers to prepay in advance, and maybe you even make that the default. I believe that HubSpot, when they're selling their contract to deals, their default is that you pay for the year in advance, and you can pay even longer in advance and get some discounts by doing it. And if you don't pay the year in advance, you're gonna have some sort of financial penalty. You're gonna pay more for them to break it up into quarterly payments. But you can sell businesses in advance. And I think we all default when we think about recurring revenue, we think about just selling monthly. Monthly is great, it's nice to have that consistent pay coming in every monthly, but it turns out that how far a customer pays in advance is directly co correlated to their success and their long-term retention. And the great news is you get cash up front. So sell long-term prepaid services to your customers. All right, lesson number seven. Now we're getting into demand generation, which I know for many of you, this is probably the most important topic because you may be just selling on your own. You don't have salespeople to manage and stuff like that. So you're like, Mike, I just need more leads. I need to sell more deals. So this section is gonna be really important to you. Starting off with the first lesson, here's a direct quote out of the book. Outbound marketing just doesn't work anymore. Buyers dislike outbound marketing so much that they actually invest in technology to keep these tactics out of their lives. Okay, he used some pretty strong language there, right? That outbound marketing just doesn't work anymore. That's not true. Outbound marketing can absolutely still work. You can still make cold calls and sell customers. You can do outbound email and get customers to respond to you and, and get deals going. But the reality is it should not be the foundation of your strategy anymore, okay? I know this, my first business was built on massive amounts of outbound cold calls, outbound email, okay? We were, I would say, as close to mastery level at doing that. But the world changed. And since then, I've changed. I am now much more of a content marketer, an inbound marketer. And that's what you need to be as well. And that's what the point is of uh, Mark's, uh, you know, book here on or section on demand generation. It's about getting inbound opportunities and not basing your strategy on doing something that the whole world is trying to resist. I mean, literally, we've got do not disturb on our phones. We've got spam blockers. We've got, you know, all these different filters in place to automatically pull you know unsolicited emails off into a folder so we never have to look at them i pay a service every single month same box 15 dollars a month just to filter emails out of my inbox okay it's not the way the world works anymore it's not the way the world wants to work anymore so base the foundation of your sales and marketing on inbound marketing not on outbound approaches that simply are much, much less effective. Okay, so then lesson number eight here. How do you do that inbound marketing, right? How do I get those leads coming to me? And one of the things that I loved about this book is he simplified it down to the fundamentals. And I think this is so important because there is so much junk out there being sold to you guys right now on, you know, the perfect funnel this and the perfect ad that and, you know, put these things together. You know, you're just going to be gushing money and customers the reality is it's not true uh, and sometimes there's some really effective ads and some really effective funnels that work for a short period of time and then everybody funnel hacks them and now the customers are all seeing the exact same stuff right here's his strategy on how to do effective inbound marketing in today's world one create quality content okay number one create quality content Seth Godin famously said that content marketing is the only marketing that's left and he's right the world is looking for content. Customers, prospects are out there looking for content, reviews, blog posts, presentations, YouTube videos, right? 
So number one is create quality content. You gotta do it consistently. Number two, participate in the social media discussions in which your target prospects are already having. Go out and find where your target prospects are engaging online and be there and participate. That's it. That's his strategy for demand generation. Create quality content and participate in the social media discussions. And he makes a couple of very important points here about this. One, it doesn't happen overnight. He admits you've got to build up momentum. It does not happen overnight. You've got to get more content out there. You've got to participate in those discussions and you will build up a foundation of credibility out there in the marketplace and attention in the marketplace and get people coming to you. Okay, but it doesn't happen overnight. Number two is it is a process and you have got to commit to the process. Okay, as somebody who creates a lot of content and has for years, I know sometimes it sucks to create content. Sometimes you feel like anything that you produce is junk, it's garbage, and you don't want to put it out there in the public. You've got to commit to it. You've got to commit to the process. You've got to ignore the voices in your head sometimes and just get content out the door. You've got to commit to that process. It can't be something that you do a week of creating content and then you stop doing it for six months and then come back to it. It's got to be considered a foundational part of how you run your business. You've got to commit to the process. Lesson number eight, this is a critical one for getting long-term recurring revenue, which is one of the most important uh, factors in success at your business, right? Because customers have to stick around for them to be profitable. It, it costs money to acquire a customer, to do your sales and marketing. And so those customers aren't profitable right away. So you've got to keep them long-term to make them profitable. And the most important factor in keeping a customer long-term is that commitment, right? It's that commitment. It's how valuable do they perceive your services because they believe that they have a big problem that's important to their business that you can help them solve, okay? If they believe that they have a big important problem to solve and that you can help them, there's gonna be commitment to getting that solved. They're gonna work hard to make this work. And that's so critical. It's the mindset of the prospect that is the number one factor in making sure that you're bringing on a quality customer. And quality customers are the ones that stick around a long time. And so he says the number one qualification criteria that you gotta pay attention to in your sales process is the engagement of the lead the engagement of the lead. And so what he means by that, and you've all experienced this, if you've got five different leads that you're talking to, some of them you're having to try and convince them of doing what they need to do with their business. Hey, you should be doing more marketing. You should have follow-up systems. You should be trying to rank in the search engines. Some of them, you, you literally are trying to convince a business owner to do those important things at their business, right? Versus other prospects that you're talking to, they know they've got a problem. They've got goals and they're not hitting them. And they know that the reason they're not hitting them is because they need help with their sales and marketing. There's some things that aren't going right. And so they're investing, trying to solve those problems. They're committed to their goals and they're willing to do what it takes to get them. That's engagement. So when you are talking to five different prospects and you've got one over here, that is not really engaging, doesn't seem to give a shit about their business, and then you've got one over here that you can tell has goals and they're trying to hit them and they want to find a solution, it should be pretty obvious which ones you should spend your time on. And not only should you spend your time on the ones that are engaging, but the ones that aren't engaging, you should be ready to let go. Okay, just like we talked about getting rid of deadweight salespeople earlier, deadweight customers, are the worst thing for your business. They're resource hogs, they complain, they don't do what they need to do to be successful and then they blame you, right? Any time spent on those customers is wasted time. You've either gotta get them engaged or give them the boot, let them go. 
which can be very hard at the early stages of your business because you're so concerned about money, I get it. But trust me, you will never ever get ROI out of the wrong customer. The longer that they're with you, the more of a problem they are, okay? So you have got to have a process in your qualification as you're talking to prospects to determine which ones are actually engaged here, which ones are clear that they have a problem that they need to solve and that we can help them and that they value that from us. And then the ones that I'm trying to have to convince, you gotta let those go, okay? Engagement is the best criteria to determine whether or not a customer is going to be successful. Okay, lesson number nine, our final lesson here, and this is from me and my experience as well as from this book, and that is that you have got to commit to fundamentals, to real sales and marketing fundamentals. And I say that because we are in a time period where there are so many people pitching so many different you know, sales and marketing secrets and easy buttons to you. There are no secrets and easy buttons that last long-term. There is no $100 million HubSpot or bigger out there that was built by focusing on hacks or gimmicks or easy buttons. It's about fundamentals. It's about committing to a strategy. It's about committing to the process that's required to see that strategy through and then putting your head down and going after it every single day and working every single day to get better, okay? And we outline, he outlined in this book and I outlined for you in this video, what are the core components of that, all right? I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope these lessons were helpful for you. I highly recommend the book, uh, but I hope that these cliff notes were helpful for you just to get started. Grab a copy of the book, study it, underline it, highlight it, dog ear it, have it on your bookshelf at all times. I think it'll be valuable for you for years. If you got something good from this video, please like it, comment, questions down below. I'd love to hear from you and share the video with somebody that you think would get some benefit from it. And last but not least, please subscribe to my channel while you're here. All right, we'll see you in another video. Thank you, take care.